Welcome to a Perspective Roundtable of the New England Journal of Medicine. I'm Meredith Rosenthal, Professor of Health Economics and Policy at the Harvard School of Public Health. Some of today's major public health problems, including obesity-related and tobacco-related diseases, are caused or exacerbated in part by individual behavior and lifestyle choices. U.S. policymakers at all levels of government are struggling to find ways to intervene and promote wellness and prevent these health problems without overstepping the bounds of government intervention or infringing on personal liberties. What can and should government do to prevent obesity and tobacco use? With me here to discuss these issues are Tom Farley, Health Commissioner of New York City, Steve Gortmaker, Professor of the Practice of Health Sociology at the Harvard School of Public Health, and Cass Sunstein, University Professor at Harvard. Well, I think I'd have a broad view screen and think not just of government, but of the private sector too. And the basic idea is that behind our choices is an architecture. So uh, just as buildings have architecture, so do decisions. So if you go to a cafeteria or a grocery store or a city square, uh, there will be some foods that are accessible and easy, and there will be some that are inaccessible and harder to get. And I think the basic behavioral insight is that what's easy and simple and salient is, tends to be what people go for, and what's difficult and not salient and complicated, uh, people won't go for. So I think the challenge for all decision makers is is to maintain freedom of choice, but also to give healthy choices a simpler path. So one thing we did in the Obama administration where I was privileged to serve was to replace, replace something called the Food Pyramid, which was a, a barely comprehensible guide to nutritious choices with something uh, simpler called the Food Plate. And that food plate is affecting consumer decisions, which also affect, in turn, producer decisions. Calorie labeling is on the way. That will be directed at uh, uh, providers, but it will inform consumers. So I think for every actor who's involved in pr promoting health or uh, promoting something that falls short of health, there's a role to play in, uh, in, in moving toward a, uh, a better architecture. You know, if you look at the history of tobacco control, the innovation really happened locally. Um, and I think that's probably what we're going to see in obesity as well. And from my perspective, the reason is because the industries are more powerful in lobbying at the federal level and they're at the state level, and more powerful at the state level at the local level. Uh, in New York City, uh, you know, we're fortunate that we have a mayor who uh, is not so much subject to the pressures of uh, being an elected official, he doesn't have to raise campaign funds. And we also have a Board of Health, uh, which is a group of scientific experts that can pass rules within a limited health domain. And they can rule simply on their health benefits. They're not subject to the political pressures of elected bodies like uh, city councils or, or legislatures. Uh, and so we've been able to do things that haven't been so much possible in other uh, jurisdictions. Uh, in small towns, often uh, the people who are voting on something are people who know each other. and so. Again, they're less likely to be blocked by commercial interests. Uh, so I do think you're going to continue to see innovation first happen at the local level, and then it may later spread to the state and federal level. I think for solutions to these big problems like obesity, ultimately we will need action at all levels. Well, I think we can always do lots of interesting work at the community level, but it's worthwhile in the world of obesity to step back and to say what's driving the excess energy intake and what's driving the excess energy intake. A big driver is marketing. Um, it's worthwhile to step back and, and think about marketing to children, which is always going to be inherently deceptive because children cannot understand uh, the marketing. And right now, at the federal level, we have more restrictions on marketing to adults than we have on marketing to children, which is a bizarre situation because it doesn't meet uh, the science or the reality. So I think there are going to be lots of innovations at the local level, but given the un, um, unbridled kind of marketing to children in this country, which is really amazing from a worldwide perspective, and the inherently deceptive nature of that marketing uh, to children, just watch children's television and you'll see what uh, is advertised, which is just a bunch of junk. I mean, it's not healthful foods or beverages. If you can't do anything about that, you're going to have a very difficult time to do things locally. I mean, you can 
restrict children's access to advertising on television. I mean, we use electronic devices that help you set timers on the amount of television time that kids get or, or restrict their internet time, you know. You can do that, but you're really fighting against a very, um, very large number of powerful forces with lots more money than most communities have to defend themselves.